We're on a bicycle adventure And you're racing in front on the bike that I lent ya We're on a bicycle adventure I packed a picnic, my lipstick for later So wait for me Welcome back. The rain is stopping and the sun's out, which means it's a lovely time to meet Eastbourne's Lorraine Bowen, singer-songwriter, comedian and musician. Discovered by Billy Bragg, Britain's Got Talent semi-finalist and contributor to Radio 4. We listen to some of her songs and we talk about her passion for cycling and experience of this in today in our town, a love of nature and how we need to remember we're not separate from, but part of it and how one of her latest songs is now part of a film score, the wonder of our blue planet and the overview effect, and what our town could be like in the future. Excellent. Absolutely gorgeous. So today we have uh, the fabulous Lorraine Bowen, who is the composer and musician behind that, to uh, join us today to talk about Eastbourne, what inspires us, what she loves, and to uh, play some of her tracks and learn more about them. So, very welcome, Lorraine. Hello, Miles. It's lovely to be here. Excellent. And uh, just curious, the... So is that a bossa nova? Yes. It is. So what, what is a bossa nova? How- a bossa nova is bossa beats and nova is new. And bossa nova is, is really, it's a sim- more simplified Latin beat, I suppose. And Sergio Menz has got the pop thing right. Do you know the way to San Jose? All that kind of mm, stuff. It was all, mm. um, Bert Bacharach used a lot of, um, bossa nova it was just a it's just a lovely sunshine pop feel it's really great yeah it is and it brings that optimism and positivity about cycling that you really want to have as the lived experience but you're not quite getting at the moment so i think it's absolutely lovely i mean listening to that track i think we mentioned before that just reminds me of sergio mendes and brazil 66 so what was the inspiration for oh. bicycle adventure sergio mendes and brazil 66 <laughs> <laughs> i'm a massive fan and uh, it was really in quite a long time it's one of my first songs bicycle adventure and uh, it sums up everything really like going off on your bike feeling the wind in your hair uh, and uh, tongue in cheek you know stopping for a picnic putting your lipstick on all that kind of stuff it's great and have you always been a keen cyclist i have yes my mum um it, oh, i think my mum bought me a bike when i was about eight and she paid me 12p if i cycled to school every day right and the bus fare was 15p i think so it was it, it was an incentive for for me to cycle and for her to save some money right and how do how do you find cycling in eastbourne i suppose that's um, a... tragic i think right. the word is absolutely tragic i'm going to be doing a piece on how tragic it is mm-hmm. and that everywhere i go it's really horrible and i'm i'm a very positive person but i'm afraid to say that it's stopping starting stopping starting and nearly falling into someone uh, nearly falling over myself because there aren't any cycle lanes to kind of call a very nice nice cycle i'm, I'm not enjoying it basically and we will do something about it right we will do something about it and you'd like to enjoy it a lot more yes um well, one of the things we're going to do, I don't have you heard of Bespoke? That's a local site. Um, I have heard program. about it and I haven't managed to go up to the pub yet for a mm-hmm. meeting because I can never find out when it is. But, you know, I will be there at some point in the, in the in not too distant future. Well, we're going to put in, into the link when we put this up onto YouTube, we'll put a link to Bespoke so right. people oh, can see good. and how to join. So the next track we want to play is um, called Take Time and that's a very different um, inspiration and uh, piece. Could you tell us a little bit about when you wrote it and what for? Yes, I, I spent a long time writing this. It's, 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 it just sounds quite a simple tune, but in fact, it was incredibly complicated. 
I don't play the guitar, so most of my stuff's either Casio organ driven, or in this case, it's piano driven. This one's in five flat, so I don't know why I made it in this key, but it just seemed to suit it really well. Sometimes keys, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm talking a bit muso-ish here, but keys are really important. You can either get it right or you don't get it right. Anyway, I think I got it right with this one. And um, yeah, so it, it was um, a massive, massive passion to say, come on, just sit still for a minute, politicians, and just look at what's going on. Um, and people just look at birds look at the grass look at really simple things people keep churning out statistics of the environment but can we just kind of take a minute to just look at things Mm. and just to feel what is going on and I've got a massive other passionate thing which is that people keep talking about nature and humans as two separate things and I always say we are all nature we're all we're all made of water and pus. How dare we think that us humans are different from the natural world? It's ridiculous. It's, it's the way language has been developed. And I think we should be more in tune. But take time, honestly, go up to the downs, sit on a rock and listen to my track. to watch the birds take time to listen to their music cause while this whole mad world goes on around nature's only trying to sing its song take time to watch the birds take time to listen to their music This whole mad world goes on around Nature's only trying to sing its song Take time to watch the birds Take time to watch the fish Take time to listen to their music While this whole mad world goes on around Nature's only trying to sing its song Take time to watch the birds Take time to watch the fish Lie down and watch the clouds Take time to listen to the music
such a beautiful track. Thank you very much, so Miles. So beautiful. I'm quite, quite enjoying it myself, actually, sitting here. Mm, it <laughs> reminds me of the, uh, the time during that very first lockdown during the pandemic when everything went very, very quiet. And living here in the centre of town, I'm opposite a park. And for one of the first times, I could actually hear birds song very clearly. And it was quite a, quite a magical time. And we saw foxes coming and going. And, um, and nature seemed to have reasserted itself. And now that seems long forgotten. It does, with... doesn't it? It seems a long time ago now. Mm, it does, it does. Wasn't it weird? If you now if you think about it, you think... What a strange thing. Did we think it was that strange at the time? I don't know. I think we did. But think now, looking back, it seems even more surreal. It does. I, I, think, I think we were in shock. I, I think we sort of adjusted to it, and then it just became very eerie and peculiar. But we looked for things that would give us solace and peace, and, um, and nature was one of those things, which is always there, but somehow it was hidden by the traffic and the noise and the light pollution on our busy lives, and and then it, it suddenly became very present. I understand that that track has been um, been selected as a for, for part of a film score. Is that correct? That's so. right. Yes, I'm ever so proud of that. Graham Fellows, whose character, com- whose comedy character is John Shuttleworth, he's a, he's a real cult superstar in my opinion anyway he's he's written a semi semi funny semi serious piece about the environment i haven't seen it yet i'm just about to go and see it in brighton on the weekend so i don't i can't really talk too much about it but i know it's about him setting up a recording studio in the hebrides i think it's the hebrides or somewhere like that and um what happens along the way but he's used my uh, track uh, boating around in the middle with his father, so I think it's it's a bit of a road trip kind of thing okay. as well about going, you know, finding his father and chatting with him and stuff. So yes, yeah, so I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. It's wonderful having a song in a film. It's happened a few times with me um, in Canada. I had a, a song in a big film, and I actually went. I think I went to Germany. That's right, where it was premiered. And it's just that feeling right in the middle when it's your songs on. You want to go, hey, everyone, hey, stop. hey, I wrote this. I wrote this. <laughs> it's magical, isn't it? It it's is really. It's bonkers because it's, it can't be better. It can't mm. be better audio sound as mm. in a cinema. You've got those eight or 16 speakers yeah, yeah. rounds and it's just been mixed accordingly and it's just phenomenal. And do you like... I was going back, but I, uh, looking at your sort of uh, bio details, if you like, um, do you like performing? You've been sort of very active over the years. Do I like performing? Bill, yeah. Billy Bragg, yeah, it right. said on Wiki, discovered you. Is that that's quite right. true? Well, it is. It is true. Yeah, I've, I've performed for ages. I was ever so shy as a child, but kind of came out in my, um, <laughs> in my tw- late 20s. I've got an amazing opportunity to perform piano and backing vocals with Billy Bragg who spotted me in a band at the Hackney Empire and said I want uh, see, I want her to come for the audition because my piano pr- p- piano is a p- player is pregnant so <laughs> so his piano player is pregnant he had two weeks to go until he was doing this major massive tour and hadn't kind of sorted it out at all anyway we got on really well in the interview I did I couldn't really play what he wanted to play but I spent the next two weeks really, really trying hard. We got on really well. I think in the, in the end, you know, it was hours and hours and hours on the bus. And you just have to be, you have to be in a party that you will get on well with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, anyway, I really enjoyed the part. I, I um, came up with a file of music which had been unheard of in the past. You're meant to just sit down there and just read and, and play it all. But I put my file on stage. Yeah. And at the end of it, he said... Well, you've got a really good presence on stage. You know, we've been all around Europe and everything. He said, leave the band that you're in, which was the Dinner Ladies at the time, this band, urban folk band I was in. He said, leave the band. I want you to write me six songs, send them to me, and I will critique them and I'll tell you what to do next. So and did you? I did. I spent the next six months doing that on my little portable four-track cassette recorder. <laughs> <laughs> this is how old it was. And uh, yes, and he 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 said he liked three of them really really well. And he said, right, go out and get a gig, 
And I would, you know, I would never have done that if it hadn't been for him because mm. I was quite, yeah, I, would, I wasn't a person who put myself forward in a solo way to be a solo person is mm. quite a thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, maybe yeah. not now where social media and everyone puts themselves out, but um, yeah, so I did a gig and I chose, you know, these songs which I thought were really quite serious and political and everyone started laughing. So, you know, my, my comedy... My comedy career started right. there. Right, that's where it came from. <laughs> uh, and and in 2015, something else happened, didn't it? Oh, 2015, yeah. yes, I managed to get on uh, Britain's Got Talent, which was an experience and a half, I must tell you. And, uh, yeah, and got on there and won a golden buzzer. Right, uh, and semi semi finalist. Yeah, which I didn't even know what a golden buzzer was when I right. won it. But all this gold stuff came down from the ceiling, and I thought, this must be good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump around because it looks like everyone's going insane. So Largo insane as well. It was uh, David Williams's golden buzzer. Right, gosh, that was a sort of experience and a half. Uh, was that Crumble song? That was my Crumble song. Mm. It's always been a favourite. I've written it bonkers, bonkers ago. And it's always a very catchy song. People, when, when I used to do the Canadian fringes, people used to go, oh, no, it's not you again. That means I've got that blinking song in my head again for the next six months. So it was an earworm then, and it seems to continue to be one. Yeah, I love the way you describe that as earworm. I, I think that, that's lovely. So we're going to play another track now, which is going back to the bicycle theme that we started with, Ooh, which good. is a track called Matching Bikes. Matching Bikes. So how did that happen? Oh, do you know, I just saw two people once just cycling along in matching outfits and matching bikes, and I thought... God, that's so sweet. I just couldn't think of anything. I just laughed so much. I just standing there just killing myself laughing, thinking, that is just so funny. They've actually decided to buy the same bikes. It was actually a, a, a heterosexual couple, so there was a woman's version of it. And, and uh, I, could, I didn't say same bikes. I said, ma- you know, matching. Mm. And they had the same <laughs> Can you imagine going to the bicycle shop and say, yes, I, I'll have that in men's and I'll have that in women's. Oh, yes, and let's have kind of similar hats and similar socks and similar locks. <laughs> so I wrote this ridiculous song. Wow, wonderful. The That's... joy of going out with someone who likes the same kind of things. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, exactly. Matching bikes, matching bikes. Everybody chooses a bike they like And yours is like mine It's even got the same shine We've got matching bells, matching bells Every time I see you it makes me yell Come out with me, come out with me Let's be fashion types, fashion types Oh come out with me, come out with me I see you, it makes me squeal with happiness and we've even got the same band. We've got matching socks, matching socks. We've even got it down to the same padlocks. Come out with me, come out with me. Let's be fashion types, fashion types. Oh, come out with me, come out with me. Somebody says something about red cars, and then all you see is red cars <laughs> for the next six months. I've now got a feeling that I'm going to see a lot of people on matching bikes. But I, I did when I went to Bexhill recently, and you can't even start saying to people, "Hey, I've written a song about matching bikes, and you're just the perfect people. Can I take a picture of you or something?" It just seems too creepy and too weird. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I have to keep it all to myself. Yeah, but it, it's a, it is a, it is a, an, a, a funny thing, isn't it? It is quite funny why people want to do that. Um, 
This doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't, but it still does happen, doesn't it? It does, it does does happen. It really really does happen. You were talking a little bit earlier about the um, the way you feel that humans have separated themselves from nature and that, uh, you know, that's an artificial distinction and that we are all part of nature. And and in a minute we're going to hear the the track called All Nature. Um, And it reminded me a little bit of... um, I go to a, a Buddhist retreat mm. in, in the summer and um, the uh, person who sort of organises it and leads the retreat, uh, James Lowe, um, talks about the separation from nature and he describes one of the issues as the way that the ego and the mind, the human mind, has organised nature in its own way. That's interesting. And call Very it labels and hierarchies right. and a vertical thing. That's really interesting. And he said, for example, a tree doesn't call itself a tree. It just is. And he said, we stand in front of a tree and we think we can see a tree. We can't. We can see part of the tree. We can only see a very small part of the tree. Very interesting, We can't see every leaf. We can't see all the roots of the tree. We can't even see the back of the trunk of the tree. And one of the things that um, we do as part of the retreat is to go out and and be with trees. So it's in farmland, as you might imagine. And this track sort of reminded me of that. And it's that sense, isn't it, that we've done great damage by thinking that we're separate to nature i think i think that if if someone could just get hold of this idea and do something about this idea it would really change people's concepts i think and unbelievably at the end of autumn watch the other day Chris Packham finished the whole series with saying, we are all nature. And I nearly died. I had to go back on the TV and just do a video of it because it was really exciting for me that it's at last coming into play. It started with me when I was touring Canada and had a chance in Saskatoon to go to a Native American Indian kind of camp kind of place and learn all about the fact that they'd been using herbs and they used the natural world and for everything and they didn't have lights and all the rest of it you know this was just it was going back like it was all a bit of a blur now but when I was there I think it really I, I really learned a lot from that and the fact that they pushed only a certain amount of buffalo over this hill to kill them uh, and they'd never ever had any to spare they had just enough mm. to last on the winter and all this kind of stuff and you know they looked after the natural world they looked after themselves within that natural world and they didn't think of themselves as any part separate and so mm-hmm. i think recently I've, I've thought a lot about it and, and think christ you when you see these pictures of shanghai well of london except you know and all the concrete and you think god there's just there's just no hope just no hope <laughs> we're just i don't know what we think we're doing it, it, it's something to think about anyway on a... it is it is well you, you wonder about how many people do actually think about what we're doing or whether people are just doing what they're doing in a sort of way that not everybody but many people are just getting on with their lives and this separation is so systemic now yes uh, that it actually takes a lot of energy and effort as we know uh, for people to to hold that as a concept and live it Um, because the system in many ways doesn't facilitate that, doesn't make that easy or uh, normal in any way. And um, so I think, but we we have got nature all around us. As you said earlier, we only have to step out and from where we are up onto the downs, it's not really very far. And, And we've got parks where nature is and Nature's in our gardens as well, you know. I'd be interested uh, to, to know how your chap, who, because it sounds really interesting what he said uh, in this camp, I wonder what, he, how he explains it in English. Because I, I, I realised in my Take Time song that I just say, you know, nature's only trying to sing its song. So I have actually used that. But I am thinking a little differently now as I'm getting older. But it'd be interesting to know 
another frame of words that we could mm. use. And that's what I do in this next song. I kind of I argue it all out in my head. It maybe sounds a little bit simplistic and all that, but I had to do it. I had to write this song because it had to be there. And that's it. It's called We Are All Nature. People seem to think they're separate, distinct from the word nature. But we're all nature, we're all in this together. All nature, all in this forever. There's no separate world for nature and us. We're all made of water and air and a bit of pus. Can't we redefine the word and over time combine? Nature. I'm tired of the struggle, I'm tired of the war Cause we're all nature, let's sing out together in this grey polluted air We're all nature, all nature, all nature, let's be fair Man assumes control of the natural world He consumes nature But he's completely balls it up He's completely undercut The reason we're all here We're all nature He hasn't quite got the notion Of this beautiful planet Earth And we're all nature All nature That's a beautiful reminder that we are all nature. Thank you very much. I I feel quite wistful and, uh, I don't know, contemplative today. Mm. (laughs) Listening to my own songs in a a row. (laughs) Well, it's lovely. I mean, do you have to, do you do that very often? No, No, never do. No, you do, no. It's it's something, and I guess parts of the story become more evident and the links become clearer um, when you do. Um, so the next track um, is called Blue Planet, and that's sort of inspired, wasn't it, by the astronaut Frank White? Yes. He was so looking down on Earth. I think it was last year that I wrote these. I can't remember. And <laughs> the years trod along. Um, I, I'd, I'd come to Eastbourne, and I've managed to get a place that's detached, which is probably the reason for moving here, because in Brighton, everyone's on top of each other, on the side of each other, <laughs> below each other and everything. And people were banging on the walls every time I sung or made any sound. And honestly, at my time of life, I just thought, do you know, I want to get out of that hell hell and let's go somewhere with a little bit more natural beauty, which Eastbourne has got, and find somewhere a little bit cheaper, I suppose, or better value for money. And I managed to make some noise. So it's wonderful. And... For the first time, I thought, oh, this is lovely. And what with the, with COVID out the way and all the, I suppose, the, the contemplative thoughts from that time of lockdown, um, I thought I'm going to write a little EP, a little EP about my thoughts, I suppose. And Blue Planet is, is, a, is a good one to play, actually, at the moment, because Elon Musk seems to think that we're all going to go and live on Mars in his world. I mean, he's a bit slightly deranged and has some issues, we, let's say that, but he wants to make money. Um, there, isn't a pla- there isn't a planet B. There isn't a planet plan B. <laughs> there isn't a planet... We can't live on blinking Mars, can we? Dear me. And one thing I've learned from Twitter is this bloke called Frank... What, what is it? Frank White. Frank yeah, White. White. Yeah, White, who was an astronaut, and he says... All astronauts, they go up into space and they have this moment when it's this gush, this this gush which is so deep and it's so meaningful and they all start crying. And I don't know whether it's because they've become lightheaded, but it's not. It's because suddenly they're seeing the beauty of the planet and they realise there's just one of us and what we're doing, we're just wrecking it. Mm. Balls, pestilence, you know, all the rest of it. Mm. It's It's a... It's almost like a, I suppose, like a, as if they're God, or if there is a God, or if, if they're they're an outer being suddenly mm. looking down. How would you explain it, Miles? Yeah, I mean, I think I've, I've listened when it may have been even Frank White or other astronauts have talked about that moment and that sense that they see this beautiful blue planet, 
and it's very special sitting there. And I guess they're part of very few people, hundreds, I suppose, who've ever had that experience. So it's very profound as well to, to undergo that. Um, and you get the sense of the fragility and, you know, just how wonderful it is, a sense of awe. Um, and I, I think for me, you know, having watched the the race to the moon, putting a man on the moon in the 60s and getting very, very excited when, you know, I still have that that moment now whenever we talk about space travel. It's got that magical feeling to it still. <laughs> so I can sort of, in a very tiny way, recognise that if you're actually doing it as an astronaut, you could get some very momentous um, and unusual feelings. And, it's called uh, the overview effect. Mm, That's what mm, he's named it mm. in his language. And I think the Dutch are trying to create something where a normal person can go into some kind of, you know, like 3D effect kind of place and have that same feeling. It would be amazing, I think, for all children to look at that. I think for all people of the, of the Earth to, to be able to see that experience it and realise what they've got and what they're going to lose if they don't sort themselves out. Looking down from outer space The overview effect is awesome Astronauts are there to face The moon, the Milky Way and more But increasingly aware These astronauts declare That it's planet Earth the blue planet that needs our love and care. Hanging brightly, oh so tiny, very beautiful and shiny, or inspiring, full of wonder, a little spot you can cover with your thumb, and there you'll become aware. These astronauts declare that it's planet Earth, the blue planet that needs our love and care. I need to do a video for that. I don't know what to do though. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a project to think it about. It is a project. It, it yes. is, isn't it? I mean, some of the photography and film, I mean, especially NASA, you know, when they produce their imagery, you know, I look at their. their um, climate change information is amazing you know and a lot of the videos are, are tremendous but it is that point of view of looking at the earth from uh, outer space that yeah is, being quite expensive wouldn't it to go up there and to have i to think take my so. own video yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe if we are not too rude with elon musk he might give us the opportunity to go up in one of his spacex oh, records <laughs> rockets but i doubt it probably too busy trying to sell us blue ticks um, on Twitter. That probably means we're going to get his lawyers on. Well, hello. Um, so, I, th I mean, when we look down on the Earth, and one of the things we see is the oceans and four-fifths of the, of, the, of the planet is ocean. And I think that's something that we tend to be very land-centric and um, not really recognise, unless we happen to be people who are all, you know, working with the oceans or uh, in shipping or flying over the oceans and um, even in Eastbourne where well, we have the channel running along our coast um, it still feels like we don't embrace the sea the channel in the way that we could so um, and then we have the whole issue about what's going on with the sea and um, I know, I don't know whether you, you've met Warm Norm and his organisation do the beach clearing and they do, they do a fantastic job uh, clearing debris from the beaches and then Plastic Free Eastbourne, I noticed, on your T-shirt. They have their beach cleans where they number off, I think, 80-odd or 90 beaches and people go down and clear. But what is amazing is just the volume of things, stuff, plastic, ropes, other things... Um, that that gets left in the ocean and basically gets dumped in it, and um, I guess that leads into the next uh, I can track. Hear this is the final track from my EP, Down to Earth. It was called. Um, yeah, I hope I'm not kind of uh, depressing anyone really, because it, well, it's a bit depressing, I suppose. But I, I I didn't make it 
well, I didn't want to make it as a depressing thing. This one's a bit more sarcastic, actually, because it's... Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd like a big orchestra with this one, but I didn't get it. <laughs> it's just me and the piano, yeah. <laughs> Keep it lo-fi, hey? Um, it's a bit expensive to create records these days. Um, yeah, so dump it in the ocean. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's not just nets and plastic floating on top, it's blinking nuclear massive nuclear waste in there as well it is a massive dumping ground it's huge mm. my brother now won't eat fish he lives in greece <laughs> he's, he he um i think he's got too much respect for fish now and also he's petrified about overfishing and i think it does even with here you know as people have become aware <clears throat> over this last summer particularly about uh, the dumping of um raw sewage and yes. uh, rainwater into the sea that's mixed with it, how that might contaminate um, local uh, near-shore fishing. You certainly wouldn't and, want to eat a crab, would you? Well, no, and it's very, very difficult. If you're, you know, if you're a, a fisher person wanting, you know, that's your harvest, that's what you do. It's really difficult, I think, isn't it? And it's going back to our theme that we're not separate from nature. We are not. Um, I think the... Politicians think we are, definitely, because uh, they're the underfunding into the sewage w works and everything. I suppose it's all p due to privatisation. Let's not get too much into that, but it is something that everyone listening to this podcast, make sure that you fight hard with your local MPs. And it's not, it's not just us in Eastbourne, it's all over the country. And yeah. Who's, is it Ferg or, what's his name? Sharky. Ferg or Sharky. Great name, isn't it, mm, Sharky? Mm. Um, he's been amazing because he's been really highlighting the fact that Britain now is a real down-in-the-dumps place. Yeah, Let's it is. Let's dump it in the ocean. Let's dump it in the ocean. Let's dump it in the sea. It's gotta go somewhere, somewhere near And they won't know it's there if we dump it here Let's dump it in the ocean Let's dump it in the sea Nuclear waste to speciality The waves will disperse it by next Friday Let's dump it in the ocean Let's dump it in the sea Plastic bags and pretty polythene You're getting the picture, you're getting the scene It affects everybody and what it's doing to build up of toxicity in the oceans and uh, all sorts of other things that happen so it's injuring health as well directly but it's also obviously affecting the flora and fauna in the sea as well so it, you know it, yes we we need to get active and we need to get involved and yes. stop it stop it from happening that's really the thing so it brings us almost to our final track, which is... Is this going to be the final track? Oh, well, it's Bex Hill. So it right. brings us back to um, how you... Did you nearly move to Bex Hill rather than Eastbourne? No, I wouldn't have moved to Bex Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I've written a song about Bex Hill. But... So is this a pity song for Bex Hill? Yeah, it is a bit, actually. Although, having said that, it's so funny now because it's, it's getting so much... It, it's so different now. In, in a funny way. I mean, it still is the old Bexhill. I wrote a song, it kind of taking the, taking the piss out of it, really, in the... Every, you know, there's not an escalator in Bexhill. It's a, it's a lovely little place. I really like it. I've always been very, very fond of it, and especially fond of a second-hand record shop there, run by um, a wonderful bloke, Philip, who, um, yeah, Second Spin, it's called. <laughs> and I used to go there a lot when I lived in London, Christ, that was a long time ago. Then Brighton. And now I live in Eastbourne. It's only down the road. And I go to the Friday market sometimes because there's a lady who makes marmalade who's really good. And 
I like I like the vibe now. There's a lot of Londoners moved down want, wanting a cheap house, and and they certainly found it. <laughs> I went to the Delaware and went to, to watch Gold Frap, and I came round the corner, and there's this pub. What's it called? Stone something. And everyone had their arms going up, beating into the air with. Boom, tsh, boom, boom. Like this. I was thinking, hang on a minute, am I in Bex Hill? <laughs> this is crazy, it's changed so much. <laughs> well, there's always that sneaky suspicion in Eastbourne. It's a bit like the people in the valleys always used to be suspicious of the people who lived on the hills, and the people on the hills <laughs> always used to be suspicious of the people who lived in the valleys. But there is this suspicion that things are happening in Bex Hill and Hastings that aren't or should be happening in Eastbourne. Yeah, what's happening to Eastbourne? Mm, so we need to catch up maybe somewhere. And um, and I think that's 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 a point. And how would you sum up? I mean, you've been here, what, how many years? Two now? years. Two now, years. So, day, yeah. so what's Eastbourne been like for you during that time? Has it surprised you? Or expectations? What are things that you... What would you like to see in the future that we... Apart from better cycling infrastructure? Yeah, I have, I have vast plans for Eastbourne. Unfortunately, I'm not anywhere near the council or anywhere. Oh, why not? Why not? <laughs> We've got three independent oh, councillors now. Do you know, it's much better if I keep writing the songs, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I think uh, I, I, I would see Eastbourne as the beginning of this really bold move of combining Eastbourne, Bexhill and Hastings on an eco-touristic weekend away for Londoners or anyone else and they come down um, there's a whole carriage for your bikes you come down start at Eastbourne stay the night of course good for tourism you know all the rest of it and uh then the next day you cycle, so so Saturday morning you cycle to Bexhill, do do that, go and see the Delaware and you know, all the rest of it, and then Sunday you cycle to St Leonard's and Hastings and get back on the train ready for work the next day in Monday. Now mm. wouldn't that be amazing? With it this, would be. It with would. This vast cycle lane round the front, and you just get you'd be healthy, you'd have a whole weekend of breathing in fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you know, a little swim on the way or something. I don't know. It just, it, I just think that would just be perfect. It would, wouldn't it? And it would be. It, it's quite amazing that you, you you can't cycle safely and uh, comfortably from, say, Holywell up near Beachy Head, through to, <coughs> excuse me, through to, through to Bex Hill, and um, imagine if we could. That, um, oh, and maybe amazing. with the um, coastal defence work that the um, Environment Agency is embarking upon or will, will be embarking upon in a few years, that opportunity might exist to, to deal with the installation infrastructure problems of narrow roads and places and actually have that cycle highway running from uh, Beachy Head all the way through to Hastings and connect up with Bexhill and Hastings and have viewing points and picnic points and all sorts of waypoints and points of interest. And I think that would be a phenomenal actual e-tourism uh, benefit because people would, one hopes, not even bring their car and they could cycle everywhere. It would and just be amazing. I mean, you've got the towner just been having awarded millions of pounds mm. for the next five years or something so there's something there that's very exciting about Eastbourne that we are mm. a contemporary <laughs> it's quite ironic and quite at odds with each other that fit we're a contemporary art town whereas you don't kind of see it when you look when you go around and they're getting rid of all the students over yeah. to Brighton but you know it's something so to answer your question what have I found about Eastbourne I think Eastbourne is a, a town for breeders. <laughs> it's a town for roosting. It's a town for uh, maybe older people because I think they feel safe here because there isn't very much going on. But having said that, last Saturday I went to a BBC introducing night of new music at the Printer's Playhouse up Grove Road. Grove Road's a nice little kind of quirky place. And um, 
it was it was rocking with Miss Melody or drum and bass rapper from Bexhill. I couldn't even believe my ears. There was people from Eastbourne one saying, "I've lived here all my life. It's so dull here. I don't know what. I don't know why I'm doing here." I said, "Well, why are you doing here?" He said, "Oh, well, you know, it's good for work and all the rest, family business and all that." I thought, "Well, that's it then, isn't it? It's the family business, and that's what makes Eastbourne very." its own little island in a way hmm. but what i'm very excited about eastbourne is is the natural beauty the fact that you look at the downs you're right at the, the hmm. tip of those downs i adore meads which is a little village hmm. anyone who doesn't know a lot of people don't know it i think it's a well-guarded secret but they are planning to put 425 new homes up there on the university plot um so that won't be a little guarded secret anymore but it's a beautiful place up there with tree-lined streets and benches along streets and cobbledness and it's it's lovely and and there's some real gems i think people don't want it spoiled i suppose and they don't want it to be a hen party town like brighton no no and i think it, it's sort of the sense that um you know, East, eastbourne's um always been the sort of quiet dignified sister of brighton um but then one's got to be careful that that doesn't become as you just said a sort of a dulling factor but actually you allow the magic you know the champagne bubbles to to float to the surface and maybe as you say with the turner prize coming to uh, the towner next year um that's a significant uh, move for the funding as an mpo I think one of the I think the Devonshire Collective have applied um, and they might be getting MPO status. And I think artists can apply now for arts project grants despite the, the cuts, but they are prioritising uh, art development outside of London. And you know, we, we certainly that. So I think there are potential things that the town can do if enough people step up and want to do it. I think. But maybe every, everyone's just comfortable going to watch the tribute bands and watching Netflix at night with the takeaway. Well, you know, we, we hope thing. not. But of course, you know, <laughs> with, with the economic situation that, that we're going to, uh, that we're in at the moment and likely to be for the next year or so, um, that's going to be very difficult to navigate. Uh, but I think we can do a lot with the four residents and and draw people together. So I think the last track is um, is Bex Hill, isn't it? Bex Hill. Bex Hill. Right. So let's hear that. When we're old, let's move to the sea. Downsize and rent, just you and me. Neighbourly friends and the bridge club for tea. It's everyone's dream It's everyone's dream In Bexhill, Bexhill, Bexhill on sea Living it up in Bexhill Bexhill, Bexhill, Bexhill's for me Let's give it up for Bexhill Cozy nights in this cozy town together Repeats of the good life and birds of a feather The Delaware Pavilion has flair I had a marvellous flapjack I had a marvellous flapjack then Yeah, in Bexhill, Bexhill Bexhill on sea, living it up in Bexhill. Bexhill, Bexhill, Bexhill's for me. Let's give it up for Bexhill. Most of my friends say that they'd move to Spain. shirt and I'd quite like the chance to remain in parades of 1950 shops eccentrics promenading their fluffy dogs we can pitch and part our days in the land that time forgot in the land that time forgot On a 
minute, there's someone surfing in Bexhill. There's youths, kids on bikes. And I've just seen someone on the grassy area sipping Coca-Cola with their socks off. Wow, Bexhill, Bexhill, Bexhill on the sea. Living it up in Bexhill. Bex Hill, Bex Hill's for me. Let's give it up for Bex Hill. Bex Hill on that track oh my god you don't even know how hard that track was was it well no it was it was, it was just oh, sorry I'm not, am i allowed to say this because i was just thinking about how it was like this bloke arrived to do the uh what's it called the flugel not not, not the um the big tuba part hmm. that boom yeah boom 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 because it's all real it's all real hmm. instruments that and um, yeah, then he got out this tiny little pocket trumpet, and I said, "Oh God, it'd be fantastic if at the end you could play that." Mm. And he did, and so he he did all these different phrases, and then I just organised them. I just love it. It mm. gives the really old bandstand kind of feel. Mm, it does. Um, needs to be in a film. That really really needs to be in a film. It's very evocative, um, isn't it? Yeah. And 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 the drummer was. Uh, a producer I went to I said can you help me with the drums because I just can't think what to do he he got into about two the two hours of the session said you know I'm not even going to go, go on any longer he said I'm going to ring my friend in Paris and see if he can play along to it so he, he rang this top drummer in Paris and said can you play and, he, and, the, and the bloke sent it back a day later this Perfect. beautiful kind of brush drums mm. all slightly jazzy and all that time and everything it was just it was just beautiful really lovely yeah well um bexel's loss is eastbourne's gain i have to, <laughs> I, have, I, have I can't to. think what to write about eastbourne at all <laughs> yeah well maybe maybe something will will uh, will occur over the uh, over the next few months or whatever um I just want to say thank you. Oh, I've really thank enjoyed. Thank you for having me. And it's been really nice playing some of my more contemplative stuff because <laughs> because normally I just get to do the crumble song and all my loud type comedy songs and I have got another side to me and it's been really nice that you've let those come out into the air on this afternoon. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, maybe come if you'd like to come back another day and we can play the other set. we can play the other sets of music um i think we'll wrap up there thank you very much lorraine thank, thank you, you thank you and uh goodbye eastbourne we hope you enjoyed meeting lorraine as much as we did in the links for this episode you'll find out more about her and about bespoke the local cycling campaign 